Okay, I am back finally. Um, I think you can see my screen, and uh, I already opened the Xilem Power Factory. And what I will do today is I will keep working with the network that we create yesterday. Okay. If you remember um, the network that I create yesterday and also I share over email is basically this small distribution network, okay? Um, let me run here a uh, power flow, okay? Um, many of you, many of you are wondering, uh, this network look much better, okay? Um, However, um, there is nothing. There is nothing different to what we did yesterday. Yesterday, what we did was create this small piece of network. There is external grid. There are several branches over there connecting in a radial configuration at least uh, several loads here. Okay, this was the job that we did yesterday. What is my plan today? My plan today is um, giving you more information how to deal with these kind of systems. Okay, um, as you can see over here um, at the at the at the top left hand side, we have here the command load flow, and the command load flow is the functionality inside Power Factory. The functionality used to calculate the um, the power flow i mean how the active and reactive power move around and also the unknown variables like the voltage and angle in other words when we use this command what we are calculating is basically the state the steady state of the system okay the steady state of the system and what we are solving is basically the power balance equation. I mean, here, what we are solving is mathematically speaking, an, an equation that say that the sum of all generation should be equal to the sum of all power demand plus the losses. This huge equation over here received the name, the power balance equation, okay? The power balance equation. When we are using this command, the command load flow, uh, power factory behind the screen is basically um, taking uh, the network, creating the admittance matrix, uh, creating the power balance equations, and then using a mathematical uh, method or a mathematical technique in order to solve this beautiful um, power balance equation. And from there, we obtain the steady state behavior of the system. Okay. This is basically an introduction about power flow. Of course, my dear students, they, 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 they have understanding about this because they they already spent several weeks uh, learning about modeling learning about power flow and so on however what is my job today my job today is to introduce few things that will be helpful for your assignment the first thing that i would like to show you is the following okay um if you press here at the top you press the common load flow you can see that the lot flow that we are running, the lot flow that we are running is basically a AC lot flow. As I explained before yesterday, I remember this is, this is the a classical AC lot flow. What does it mean um, classical AC lot flow? The classical AC lot flow, if you remember, the power system is basically a three-phase system. We have line one, line two, line three. And to be honest, when we are using the classical load flow, we assume that this system is balanced. I mean, that you have the phasors that all of them have the same magnitude, 
but at the same time you assume that the system is symmetrical. That means that the impedance, equivalent impedance per each line is the same. As a consequence, when we are using the AC load flow, we care just about one of those lines and we say, okay, this is the voltage for line one, this is the voltage for line two, and this is the voltage for line three. If I consider only the line one, the difference with the other two is 120 degrees here and 120 degrees here. That's all. Okay. But this explanation is just the starting point. Because here I would like to show you, I would like to show you several aspects that they are very, very important. When we run, we win room the lot flow in this way, this is the classical lot flow. However, today I would like to teach you something about voltage dependence at the loads. What does it mean voltage dependence at the loads? Well, if you remember any load, you can imagine this like a load, every single load, it can be described by uh, active power and reactive power consumption. And this active power and this reactive power, they can be a function, they can be a function of the terminal voltage. What I'm telling you, what I'm telling you, this is the phasor voltage, and this is the magnitude of the phasor voltage. What I'm telling you is that every single one of these loads, they can, can be described like a function that is dependent of the voltage. And this is reality, okay? We are moving a step forward from the classical, from the classical um, power flow. In the classical power flow, let me tell you, in the classical power flow, we assume that P is P0 and Q is equal Q0. This is known as a constant power model. What does it mean constant power model? That the voltage can change but the consumption will remain constant. And the reality is that not all the loads inside the electrical power system follow this characteristic. In reality, inside electrical power system, there are some loads that they are constant power, but there are also some loads that they are not in that sense. For that reason, for that reason, the best way to analyze, the most specific way to analyze a load is considering the voltage dependence. And the first part of this class today is to tell you how to include that model inside your power factory model, okay? Well, I will clear here, I just clear here. And what I will show you right now is the most simple way to do this. Here, you can see the following. If I run the classical load flow, if I run the classical load flow, you can see that in this very specific load, the load number two, you can see that the power flow is here, 100 kilowatts, 60 kVr. And those values, those values match the operating point. Let me change the color. I don't like this color. Let me use the other one. Those values, 100 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts and 60 kVr, they match the operating point. You can see that they match. And the reason that they match is because by default, by default, power factory consider the active and reactive power as a constant value. Okay? That means that by default, power factory consider constant power model. Okay? To be honest, this is the worst case scenario. By default, that is the worst case scenario. But let's do the following. Now, let me explain how to include a load model 
in this system. And it's very simple, okay? Let me go back, let me close here. Let me go back to the same size. We have one, two, three, four, five, six loads. And for simplicity, I will assume that all those loads, they have the same load model. Now, the question is, how do we define the load model? And we define the load model, we define the load model by using what we call the type LOD, okay? Well, if you remember my previous explanation, you can see that this is the element load. You can see here, this is the L uh, E L M L O D. This is the element load. And this element load is complemented but what by what we call the type. Here we are uh, we add the type the type will be added over there okay now how do we do so well my dear students that is extremely simple okay let's do the following let's do the following let me double click here i will do new project type new project type you can see over here new project type and then I will select general low type. And when I am doing this, when I am doing this, Power Factory is creating for me. Sorry, let me do it again. Type, new project type, and here general low type. Okay. What I will do now is I will tell you the following. Okay. You can see over here, this is the type load and here there is a small tab we call this tab and this small tab is where we define this is the place that we define the load type okay okay let's do the following let me clean here i will put the name my load type my low type then i will go here to lot flow and this is the mu most beautiful part power factory allows you to define voltage dependence you can see over here voltage the dependence in this case this is the voltage dependence for q and this is the voltage dependent for p okay now now what we need to see here what we need to see here is that there are some coefficients and some exponents they are coefficients and they are exponents and probably you are wondering what is the reason for that. And the reason for that is very simple. Inside Power Factory, inside the Excellent Power Factory, we use what we call the SIP model. SIP model means constant impedance, constant current, and constant power. I will tell you again, this is constant impedance, constant current, and constant power. Probably you are asking yourself or wondering yourself, how do we know that? Well, you don't need Francisco Gonzalez here to teach you that. Because I assume that somebody in the theory explained that. However, however, if you want to learn about this, you must follow my classical advice. And my classical advice is use the button F1 because F1 will open the help. 
And to be honest, I need that my students read the technical reference. I mean, every single component inside Power Factory, they have technical reference. And over there, you can find the information and the, and the explanation about what is happening inside the Excel. For that reason, what I will do is now I will press the button for F1, bam, and now Power Factory is opening the help. And I will put here in the main screen, you can see here my, this is, this is the, um, the Acrobat that I am using for, and you can see that Power Factory opened for me the technical reference, okay? You can see over here at the top, you can see over here, technical reference. And inside the technical reference, references, sorry, in plural, uh, here we have the general load model. The general load model is the name of the model that we are using for the loads. We need to be honest, there are more models for loads inside Power Factory. However, the other loads like the complex loads or medium voltage loads, they are, they are far away from the basic conversations about Power Factory. And what I will do is I will focus in this general load model. And what I will do is open the technical reference, okay? To open the technical reference, go here. They say open, of course. You press the link, the hyperlink, and you will go to this beautiful technical reference. You can see here, technical reference for the element load and for the type load. Beautiful. As you can see on the left hand side, we have here several sections and I will focus here in the section related to load flow analysis. I will focus on that section. Let me go over there, reduce a bit the zoom. And what I looking for is the voltage dependence. Wow, here you can see this is beautiful. I love this because here in page number five of your technical reference of Power Factory version 2022, you can read more information and you can see the equations. I love this because you can read the equation for the voltage dependence. Here, my students can see something. P for active power, Q for reactive power. Then we have the letter U. In Germany, they use U with this small line below because that means the phasor and this is the voltage. Voltage is the actual voltage at the load. U0 represent the nominal voltage. For that reason, I believe all my students can see if the nominal, if the actual voltage is equal to the nominal voltage, this ratio here is one. Beautiful. What I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to tell you in a simple word is that this term, this term, and this term represent the voltage def deviation. This represent, this represent the voltage deviation. If the voltage move away from the nominal voltage, well, that number can be bigger than one or smaller than one. And they are, they are very important. They are very important implications if that number is below one because the contribution will be lower or if the number is larger than one, the contribution for the voltage deviation will be higher, okay? Okay, then we have the most important aspects. We have here the coefficients. You can see here the coefficients. Coefficients. Coefficients for active power, and they have the letter P, and here coefficients for the reactive power, and they have the letter Q. 
And then we have those beautiful components here, and they are the exponent. Beautiful, I like it. Well, those equations over there, they represent how the voltage dependence is affecting is affecting the the active and the reactive power okay i i run an explanation here a very reasonable and very basic explanation about active and reactive power however if you want to read more if you want to read more what you need to do what you need to do is come here and read However, there are many IEEE papers discussing about the SIP model. I mean, this uh, voltage dependence model, and you can go to IEEE Explorer and you can read more, okay? You don't need to ask me. However, what is important here for my students, especially related with the assignment, is the table 2.1, okay? This is the table 2.1. Because the table point, uh, 2.1 at page number uh, 6 is telling me that if we use 0, this is constant power. If we use 1, that is constant current. And if we use 2, we are talking about constant impedance. In that sense, in that sense, what we can think about is depending of the exponent we can have we can have constant power constant current or constant impedance okay now let me tell you the following let me go here let me go here i believe you can see that if this exponent over here is zero and this one is zero and this one is zero well something good happen because any number that is exponent zero that is one that's mean that means that this number is converting to one and as a consequence the voltage is not affecting the power production okay but if this number this exponent is two that means that when the voltage deviate or change from the nominal voltage u0 well you will have a massive impact because this exponent is 2 okay well but let's go back to the practical stuff because the students they love to put numbers okay what i will do now what i will do now is i will put 0 here 0 here 0 here and 0 here well, if all my students remember, and they must remember well, if those exponents are zero, zero, that means that the model is constant power, okay? Let me see. Let me put here zero, okay? Sorry, yes, zero is here. Now we assign my load type to the load number two. Okay, no problem. And then what I will do is I will use the network model manager. I open the mo network model manager. I will go to the loads because I have more loads here. And I will use the same. I will use the same model, the same type for the other loads. And what I will do is copy here and paste well you can see the following my dear students right now all the models for those loads has been assigned and you can see that all those loads they have the model okay now we have include we have include the voltage dependence model to each one of those loads the next step is let's run a power flow but this power flow we can go here to the top and activate here the command load flow 
but we need to tell to Power Factory, and this is a very important aspect. We need to tell Power Factory that we are including the voltage dependence for all the loads, okay? Remember, because otherwise, if you don't tick this option, Power Factory will run the classical load flow and the classical load flow is based in a constant power model, okay? This is something for kids, anyone knows this. And now what I will do is execute. <gasps> Professor, nothing happened. No, no, yes, something happened. Let me show you. Now we have the load model and we have here the results. The actual value is 100 kilowatts, 60 KVR. And this is the operating point that we define. But this operating point is for a voltage that is one per unit. Okay? But now let's do the following. With this simulation, why, what I demonstrate, what I have demonstrated, what I explained to you is that with constant, with constant power model, we obtain the same results, the same load flow that we get, that we get when we are using, when we are using the classical load flow. But now let me change the model. What I will do is I will open the network model. I will go to the general load and I will change, I will change the load flow dependence and what i will do is include a number two here a number two here okay my students must remember if you use a number two here and a number two here what we are doing is including the voltage dependence with a exponent that is number two and that means this is a constant impedance model. Now let's see how this affect, how this affect the results. Okay, let me change the thing. Let me clean here. This is two. Perfect. Now we can see, let me check again. Yes, it's a number two. Now let me run the power flow. Let me be sure that we include here the voltage dependence. And I am making this very clear, my dear students. I am making this very clear because I don't want to receive one email. Professor, the voltage dependence is not working. Come on, you need to do this step, okay? You will have a copy of this video and please watch this 10 times or 100 times, but don't email me asking that. Okay, now we execute the load flow. Oh, there is a change. I don't know if you can see, but there is a small change here. Let me open the load. Oh no, there is not so much change. And because the voltages are almost, the voltages are almost one per unit. Okay. Okay, I, I can show you this much better. Let me, let me show you this much better. I don't know if you realize, but all the voltages are almost one per unit. What I will do is the following. I will destroy the voltages. <laughs> what I will do is I will run a simulation where the external grid will have 0 0.95 per unit. Then I will run a simulation with 1.0 and then I will run a simulation with 1.0.4, uh, 1.0 per unit. Okay. Let me, uh, let me clean here. Let me remove this. Okay. Please pay, pay attention. However, you will see the video later. I will open here the external grid. And here at the external grid, 
I will modify the voltage set point and I will include here 0 0.95. What is the idea of using 0 0.95? That I, oh Jesus. No, no, no. Well, okay. I will put here 0 0.95. Perfect. I will run the load flow. And as you can see, because I am using here 0 0.95, all the voltages below, they are reduced. And because the voltages are below than 1.0, look what is happening with this load flow. Ouch. Why is not showing me? You can see over here, this is the operating point, but look over here, the real power consumption. This is 9.2 kilowatts, uh, sorry. This is 90, 90.2 kilowatts. This is the active power consumption, and this is 54.1 kVr. However, if you compare this value with this, you can see that 90.2 kilowatts is lower than 100 kilowatts. And the reason is that this value is only true if we have a voltage that is one per unit. If this voltage is below than one per unit, what is happening here is that the load have a lower consumption. What I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to show you is that if we use a constant impedance model and the voltage is below to the nominal voltage, the power consumption is less. Okay, probably my students are wondering, Okay, professor, but what's happened if the voltage is higher than one per unit? Well, let's do that. It's extremely simple, okay? I will close here. I will go to the external grid. I will go now and I will include 1.05, okay? What I am doing here is I will use 1.05. Let me check here. 1.05 let me run the load flow beautiful you can see over here 1.05 per unit and 1.05 look over here the results p equal 110.2 kilowatts and the reactive power is 66.1 kvr but now, if we compare with the nominal value, look over here, nominal value, yes, you can see here, the nominal value is 100 kilowatts and 60 kVr. Conclusion, if the real voltage, the voltage at the connection point is larger than one, well, P and Q will increase. But if the voltage, the terminal voltage is below one, P and Q will reduce. Beautiful, beautiful. Of course, this conclusion is only valid for constant impedance. And you will be doing something similar to this in your assignments, okay? Okay, let me, let me go back here. Let me go back here. And what I will do is I will put come back here these two one per unit. And if I use one per unit and I run the load flow, perfect. You can see here the result. You can see that this is matching. This is almost 160 and this is 160. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That means that now you have a proper understanding 
now you have a proper understanding how to include the voltage dependence at the loads okay beautiful if you want to learn more about this there are a couple of videos in my youtube channel where i explain more details and also how to compare the losses and many other stuff okay remember the losses are included here in this box over here you can see you have losses p in this case losses p is 1.41 kilowatts and you have also losses q that is 0 0.77 kvr okay beautiful i love this okay however i don't like this test system this test system is unrealistic okay they publish this paper however i don't know how they publish this paper i don't like this paper what i will do now is i will use another test system i will use another test system and in the next test system what i will do is i will show you more practical uh, situations related to your assignment okay <coughs> sorry what i will close i will close this one and this is the next uh, system that we will be using okay this is again a distribution system you can see here there is external grid but i like this i love this uh, this test system okay you can see here there is a feeder we use the name feeder for this here we have another branch of that feeder and we have another okay to be honest i love this this system because i use this one for my phd thesis many years ago okay and this system is a 11 kb this is a 11 kb three phase system okay this um this test system is coming from japan to be honest it's coming from one area in japan that is called kumamoto and this system okay here i use i say 11 kb this is line to line or 6.6 .6 kb line to neutron okay I will not go in that discussion, but if you want to see the full data of this system, what you need to go is find this um, find this paper. That paper was published in July 20 to, um, sorry July 2000 in the general meeting, the IEEE PES general meeting 2000, that it was in Washington, United States. And, and I love this, this, uh, this test system because I got the real data coming from Kevin Tomsovic. Kevin Tomsovic is a very well-known uh, professor in the United States. And at, at that moment, in year 2000, he was working in, in distributed energy resources and so on. And, and he, he gave me this data, okay? I will share this I will share this system with all of you uh, later today and as you can see <laughs> as you can see over here this version of the Kumamoto is coming from 2012 okay um, I create that system I think originally in 2006 2007 and it's still valid okay let me run a lot flow here okay I will run a classical load flow and when you run the load, the classical load flow you can see you can see how the voltages how the voltages are changing depending of the location okay in a classical distribution system in a classical distribution system we usually have very high voltage here at the head of the sorry head let me let me do it again typically we have here high voltages you can see 1.02 per unit at the head of the distribution system and then when we go further you can see here we call this the tail 
we have lower voltages, okay? This is the tail, this is the head, and here you can see 0 0.99 per unit, okay? That is a classical situation in distribution system. I say the classical situation, why? Because in distribution system, there are different things that can happen. In a very old distribution system like this, year 20, uh, sorry, 2000, um, classical distribution systems, they have a reactance that is almost similar to the resistance. For that reason, if we are having loads with an inductive power factor, if we have inductive power factor, that explain, I mean, inductive power factor or lucky currents with a reactance that is similar to the resistance in the, in the overhead lines that will create this situation. The situation is that in the radial system, the voltages will be reducing when you are move, moving away from the uh, from the head okay okay probably you are wondering why this gentleman is asking this okay because in 2000 they were not so much penetration of renewables they were not so much penetration of pv systems but today gr 2022 we have so much we have so much penetration of uh, solar PV, batteries, and so on, electric vehicles and many things. However, from the voltage, from the, con for the voltage control point of view, the most relevant components are the battery energy storage and the PV system, okay? What I will do here, what I will do here is just a very basic example, okay? In this thing, what I will do is first, I will mm, unfreeze the mm, diagram. And right now you can see on the left hand side, on the left hand side, we have here all the tools. And what I will do right now is I will take here, there is a symbol that you can see that symbol is for PV systems, okay? This symbol is for PV systems. And if you look over here, in the classical Kumamoto network, the voltage in this bus bar is 0 0.99 per unit, okay? Many people complain about the in PV systems. However, the PV system, they have the potential to improve the voltage profile. And what I will do now is I will show you that if I install this PV system over here in the bus bar number 11, I can change, I can change the um, voltage profile. And what I will do is I will click here and right now I have a PV system that I will connect at bus bar number 11. Plum. Now we have here a beautiful PV system. To be honest, I will redraw this PV system. I will select here, redraw the element and I will put like this. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And also I will rotate this, I will rotate this clockwise, and let's see what we have here. Double click at the PV system. Oh, I almost forgot. Many people forget that a PV system is producing electricity in DC voltage. I mean, to be honest, the PV panels, the PV panels, they produce DC voltage and that DC voltage is going to a power converter. The power converter receives DC and they produce AC. And from there, they are going to the network, okay? Beautiful. But many people forget that. And if you look here in Power Factory, what I will do is the following. <laughs> I will see many people in YouTube doing this. 
look over here if if you see over here you have the power converter of course but we usually draw the power converter huge size and then here we have in a small side the pv system okay <laughs> okay this is something to wake up you and let me go back to the normal size and then double click here if i double click here you are on front of a beautiful element you are in front you are in front of this elm pv syst what does it mean this this is the element pv system the element pv system the element pv system is the element that allow you to model a classical PV system, okay? Let me take a bit of coffee because I need coffee. Perfect, we have coffee. Now, what I will do is the following. The first thing that I need to define here is I will use a megawatt scale. I will use a megawatt scale PV system. And in this PV system, in this PV system, what I will do is, let me, let me check again. Let me, uh, don't do this. You don't need to do this. I just check something here. I will run the load flow to see the value of this load. I believe you can see that the, this load is 6.5 megawatts. What is the idea? that I will install here at 8 MVA, 8 MVA PV system. And to do so is very simple. Double click here. I am using MVA. I will install here 8 MVA. Okay. This is right now at 8 MVA, 8 MVA rate power PV system. The next step, what I will do is press here OK, and I will run the load flow to see the results. Oh, I remembered I need to put in service the PV system. Sorry, it's my fault. Now it's in service. Oh, it's doing nothing. Yes, of course, because we have a 8 MVA PV system, but this PV system is producing zero because we need to tell the PV system the power that is producing in order to run a load flow. For that reason, double click here, double click at the PV system. Uh, sorry. Okay, double click and then go to here, load flow. Okay, go here to load flow. And if we go to load flow, you can see now the operating point. To be honest, to be honest, this is what we call the power dispatch. What does it mean the power dispatch? That is the power that we say to the PV system produce that power at that moment. And what I will do, my dear students, what I will do is now I will change the units to megawatts. Perfect. And I will say produce, you will produce, you will produce six megawatts. Okay. Look over here, right now I'm saying this is producing 6.5. Let's say 6.5, yeah? 6.5 megawatts. And let me clear here. Let me run the simulation. Wow. Look over here, my dear students, pay attention to this. I will switch off. I will put out the service the PV system and you can see here that the power let me put here with 
out PV. The power that is moving here is 6.5 megawatts. And now let me run here with the PV system, yes, with the PV system producing 6.5 megawatts. Well, now double click. Now put on service. Beautiful. Now let's room. Let's room the lot flow. Beautiful. You can see 6.5 megawatts coming there. And what is the interesting thing? That when we are producing 6.5 megawatts, they are going to the load 6.5 megawatts. And as a consequence, the power coming from the grid, the power coming from the grid is almost zero. That is the reason that if you have a lot of sun, you want to install a PV system on the roof of your house because you, uh, you can use the, the, the PV system for self-consumption. What is the bad news? The bad news is that you need to produce a lot of electricity during the day in order to have a battery because during the night what you have is moon if you have some if, if you have moon and you don't have electric production of the PV system during the night for that reason it's a very good business in several countries installing the PV system at home okay I will not go in the business case but now you know how to install, now you know how to install a PV system. But most important here, today I want to tell you more features about this, about this very specific PV system. The PV system has a power electronic converter. I love the power electronic converter because the power electronic converter allowed to produce P but also Q. If we run the load flow right now, if we run the load flow right now, you can see that the P here, the P here is 6.5 megawatts, but the Q is zero. And probably my students are wondering why the reactive power is zero. Well, the answer is very simple because the power converter has several control mode. Okay, we, we call that operational control mode. Okay. Um, few years ago, we start to have a standard, American standard, the IEEE 1547. In that standard, we define different operational modes for the PV system. For many years, we have been using the PV system producing zero reactive power. And to be honest, it took probably a couple decades to change the mind of the people on the utility to include some more operational modes because the power converter can be a friend of the grid. To be honest, if you want to read more or learn more, I highly suggest that you go to my research gate or go to my YouTube channel and there are different um, contains related with grid, sorry, with um, grid friendly, grid friendly converters or smart converters. And a smart converter, and a smart converter, is basically a converter that behaves in a very good or friendly way to the grid. And that is what I want to explain to you today. If you double click here to the to the converter, sorry, to the PV system, we can go here to load flow. And in the load flow, you can see over here, you can see over here that there are different controllers. 
This is for the local control. And at this moment, at this moment, we are using one of the most basic, one of the most basic operating modes. This operating mode is called constant Q. When you say constant Q, that means the converter is providing P and the Q is defined by the value that you define. For instance, in this case, the Q is defined at zero MVR. You can see over there. If you want to produce more reactive power, you can do it. Let's put here one MVR. You will see that probably the voltage will go up, okay? We are operating at constant Q. Constant Q, you can define here the reactive power dispatch. Let's do that and run the load flow. We run the load flow, look over here, the voltage at boost bar number 11, the voltage at the boost bar number 11 is going up. It's going to 1.03. And that is because we are producing here 1.0 MVR. If we reduce that reactive power production, let's say 0 0.5 MVR, you can see that the voltage, sorry, that the voltage is reduced. In this case, using 0 0.5 MBR produce 1.02 per unit voltage at boost bar number 11. But to be honest, using this control mode is not quite exciting because using constant reactive power is not effectively helping the grid. It's not grid, grid friendly. It's not grid friendly. Because if I use another control mode, like constant V, constant V is very interesting. Why? Because if we use this control mode, this control mode is very simple. In this control mode, the control, let's say this is the control, the control is measuring the voltage and sending here reactive power reference in order that the converter produce reactive power. And if we set this to one per unit, well, if the converter, the control of this converter see that the voltage is trying to move away from one per unit, the controller will modify the reference and make the converter produce more or less reactive power in order to compensate the deviation. And that is beautiful. Let me show you. I will include here one per unit and I will tell the controller of this converter work as a constant voltage. Now I will run, I will run the simulation and you can see over here, in this case, the voltage is 1.0 and you can see over here that in this case, the converter is taking reactive power in order, I'm sorry, producing reactive power in order to control the voltage. Let's do the following. Let me, ch let, let me do the following. Let me put that voltage in 1.1. Now I will run the load flow. Look over here. This is 1.1. <laughs> but to get that voltage, look over here. You need 6.1 NVR. <whistles> wow. You need 6.1 MVR. And if you reduce the voltage, let's say that the voltage now is 1.0. Uh, sorry, no. 
Let me do it again, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, voltages. Um, constant V. And I will say 1.05. And I will run the load flow. 1.05, we are talking about 2.5 MBR here. Beautiful. But, but, constant reactive power and constant Q, they are only two of the most basic controllers, two of the most basic controllers that you can find for the converters. Um, as you can see over there, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different controllers for the converter. And probably you are wondering, will you explain all of them? The answer is no. <laughs> We don't have time here in conversations about power factory. However, again, what I suggest to my dear students is going to the technical reference of the user manual of the Xilin power factory. And you must remember the advice, press F1 and power factory will open the help. Okay. F1 and power factory will open the user manual and where is the pv system well what we need to do is identify uh where is the pv system sources no generators uh let's see oh yes pv systems we identify here let me show you here because my students always where is where is and you can see here this is the pv system and what i will do is click here and after clear clicking there look over here yes this is the beautiful this is the beautiful user manual of the pv system this is the pv system and inside this PV system, inside this PV system, you will find several, uh, several, um, I think it's here. No, this is for the PV system. This is not the generator that I'm looking for. Uh -huh, let me see. No, this is the solar calculations. No. Um, let me go back here. Let me press F1. F1. Come on, open the help. Yeah. And show me here the technical reference. And I need that you look for the... Where is, where is it? because this is the PV system, but this is the solar photovoltaic. Where is the, uh, it's not here. No, where is the gen, uh, synchronous, saturable, double, ah, here. The one that we need to open is this one, because here is where the explanation is, ELM, gen stat okay what does mean this this is the element generator static generator okay let me open that one yes and we are here at the element static generator let me highlight here let me go up a bit okay Remember, we need to find the static generator. Sorry for using the bigger, the very big dot over there. Let me change the size again. And let me come back to the normal size. And then I will go here to the load flow section. Going to the load flow section is beautiful because inside the load flow section, you will have the reactive power limits, but also you can see here the different controllers, okay? Section 3.1 
of the user manual and technical reference of the static generator, you define over there, you define over there the um, different controllers, okay? Constant V, constant Q, we already, we already work with them. However, there are many others, okay? What I suggest is that my students have a reading of this section, and of course, there are equations to explain the proper behavior, okay? I, I highly suggest, um, uh, I, I will say in other words, I suggest my student to go over there and read more about the other control models, okay? Okay, well, what I will do now is the very end of this section today. I will do a couple things, okay? Um, when we are interested on controlling voltages, in a electrical system, it can be distribution, it can be uh, distribution or transmission, okay? However, typically in distribution systems to control voltages, we use here a transformer. I know that my colleagues already explained the under load, under load, tap changer. What does mean a uh, under low tap changer? Well, it's a very interesting and a very beautiful device because you can imagine the transformer. Okay. This is a three phase transformer, but let me draw here. We can say this is high voltage to neutral and here we have uh, low voltage to neutral. Okay, let me let me let me use the common ground. Okay, I will not go deeper in this, but this is the tap changer. The tap changer, what is modifying is the number of, let's say, mm, coils that you are selecting in this transformer. And by doing so, the ratio between the voltage at the high side and the low side, they can be modified. Um, this is something that is really interesting for you and really important and relevant. And I already put in the Canvas website a couple of videos related with this. For that reason, I suggest that also you watch those videos because they will be helpful for you at the assignment, okay? Okay, beautiful. What is the last step? The last step is I will put out the service. I will put out the service, uh, the PV system. I put out the service, the distribution system. And then I will run the classical LUT flow. And this is the original network that I will share with you. This is the original network that I will share with you later tonight, you know. And what I want to show you is something new, okay? Every single year, I really, really bored of repeating stuff especially related with Power Factory. Power Factory has so many functiona functionalities and so many characteristics that people must know it, especially young people like you and all the people at YouTube watching those videos, of course. Young or not young, okay? Sorry, I was drinking a bit of coffee. Well, I would like to show you a very interesting tool inside the Excellent Power Factory. I believe that now I press this icon over here. And when I press that icon over there, a set of tools, additional modules that can be used in the Excellent Power Factory, they are 
presented over the year. And for me, one of the most beautiful tools that you can see, oh Jesus, let me try to do it in this way. Uh, you can see here, there is a tool that is called distribu distribution network analysis. This is beautiful. I mean, let me press over there and you will see, you will see that the icons here at the toolbar, they change. Because right now we are using the distribution analysis tool. And the first icon that you will find over there, the first icon, to be honest, is extremely exciting. Because this is a tool that has been included in Power Factory in recent years. And this tool received the very specific name. You can see here the name. And that is the command for hosting capacity. Hosting capacity. Hosting capacity is a very interesting concept. Hosting capacity, they are, they, are, they are two very interesting things. They are hosting capacity that, that allows you to calculate the maximum integration of distribute energy resources in your system. I don't know if you realize, but I put in this network one PV system and I went over there and I say 6.5 or 8 mega uh, MBA. But nobody say to me, come on, you don't do that like that. <laughs> I mean, nobody do in serious, in serious and real situations, something like that. You must understand that the network has a capacity. The network has some MVA that the network can use. Beyond that, you are in troubles because you can trip the protections, you can overload the cables or the transmission lines, or you can, you can go further on the voltages or going down in the voltages. For that reason, for that reason, we need to consider the limit of the capacity that can be installed in a single bus bar. Of course, in the whole system. That number is the hosting capacity. The hosting capacity will tell you the amount of their, their distribute energy resources that you can install. And this beautiful tool from the Excellent Power Factory is doing the job. Okay, let me show you, let me show you. When we are using this tool, there are two possible options that we can, um, you, we can identify. The first one is the calculation objective. The calculation objective is defined in this way because this is a optimization problem. Hosting capacity is a optimization problem. Because what you want to do is maximize the install capacity. And that is this option here. When you say hosting capacity to maximize the distribute energy resources, what you are doing is determining the maximum PV system that you can install over there. And then there are another possibility, and that is the spare load capacity. And the spare load capacity is related with the maximum load that we can install over there. But if you remember something about mathematics, and I usually have very clever and brilliant John students with very good mathematical background, an optimization problem, for instance, minimizing FX is subject is subject to several constraints. We have constraints. Those constraints can be in different ways. 
they can be boundaries, they can be linear constraints, they, they can be non-linear constraints, but I will not discuss that. My students, they know more about that because they are very good in mathematics, okay? However, here in Power Factory, we have several constraints. Thermal limits, that means that these cables, those cables over here, they don't go on fire, okay? They don't get fire. That is the thermal limit. When we select here the option voltage limits is because we want that the voltages stay inside some limits. Also, you can define protection limits if protection devices are included in this system. But also, you can define power quality limits, okay? I will not talk about the last two because they are not relevant for these conversations about power factory, okay? What I will do is the following. I will clear here, and I will room the hosting capacity for calculating the distributed energy resources. I will consider the thermal limits. I mean, I will take in consideration the maximum, the maximum current that can go in those transmission lines. But also, I will include the voltage limits. And when I say the voltage limits, that means that I will check that the boost bars, all the voltages are inside some limits. And now is the beautiful part, okay? because those constraints are defined here in this section. If you take here to constraints, there is an option here that say constraints. And in those constraints, you can, you can analyze the thermal limits, the voltage limits, I mean, define the thermal limits and the voltage limits. Let me do it here. For instance, in this example, we are saying that the maximum thermal loading will be 100%. That means that we will not have any component overload. In other words, all the components must be below or equal to the maximum thermal loading. And here we have the voltage limits. And as you can see over there, the voltage limits they are beautiful because they are defining per unit. All the voltage will be between 0 and 95 per unit. And I'm sorry, let me, my goodness. All the voltages will be, the magnitude of those voltages must be between 1.05 per unit and 0 0.95. Beautiful, great. Okay. Well, um, now... What I will do is execute this analyze. Execute the analyze. Oh, what happened here? Ah, okay, I remember. I forgot to define something. Yes. <laughs> okay, you need to define where you want to calculate the hosting capacity. Sorry, I forgot to, to do that. I mean, we define the objective function. We define the constraint. We define clearly the constraint, but we forgot to tell Power Factory the bosses that we want to include for the hosting capacity. And that is simple. You say, see, uh, you click here. Let me explain again. Let me click here. Yeah. You select here. Uh, we need to define the hosting sites. To do so, we say select. And I will select all the bus bars okay i will select all the bus bars now we select all the terminals over there and now run the hosting capacity yes power factory run the hosting capacity and what is interesting is that if you look over there you can see that Power Factory calculate the hosting capacity and the results are presented here in the single line diagram. However, if you want to assess more deeply the hosting capacity, what you need to do is come here, sorry, the next icon, and receive, 
or retrieve the hosting capacity report. And now what I will do is I will ask Power Factory to create the, rep, the report for the terminals considering the constraints, okay? And look what is showing me here, Power Factory. Power Factory is showing me the maximum active power that we can use, maximum reactive power, the maximum loading. Remember that the loading must be below, below one per unit. And also you can see here the voltages. All the voltages are constrained below 1.05, okay? That means that if we want to install, if we want to install a PV system in bus bar number, let me see which one was the bus bar, number 11. The maximum distribute energy resource that we can install Tall at bus bar number 11 is 26.1 megawatts zero MVR. But probably right now my students are, Professor, quick question. But if the device produces reactive power, that number will change, isn't it? And I will say, yes, of course, let's do that. Let me show you that to my beautiful and intelligent students. What I will do now is I will run again the hosting capacity. But in the hosting capacity, oh my goodness, where is uh, it's here in configuration? <clears throat> it, here in configuration, you can see here in hosting capacity, we select here configuration and here we can define the power factor operation. In this case, let's use 0 0.95 capacitive. Okay. Okay. Wait, let me clean here. And the previous result, the previous result, if we use power factor one, the hosting capacity was, the hosting capacity was 26, 26.1 megawatts, zero MVR. Now we want to use 0 0.95 capacitive. Let's do that. <laughs> And now we go here to uh, configuration 0 0.95 and we will use capacitive execute you and then let me get my result. Oh my goodness. As you can see now, as we are using 0 0.95, the active power is reduced to 14.6 uh, megawatts because the maximum reactive power will be 4.799 MVR. This is beautiful because right now I show to my students, okay, I want the converters to produce reactive power. But if the converter is producing reactive power, how that reactive power is affecting the possibility of producing active power and sell active power to the grid. And remember the following, when you receive the electricity bill, the electricity bill coming from the utility, you are paying for kilowatts hour kilowatt hour and kilowatt hours they are related with active power not with reactive power for that reason this this idea of grid friendly converters converters that they have the possibility of delivering reactive power to the grid 
they start to be interested because they can help the distribution system. But also helping the distribution system will affect your possibility of making business and getting more money from the utility. That is quite interesting. However, that discussion is above miles away from this course about basic stuff of power system analysis. Okay. Okay. Um, it's almost, uh, wow, it's one hour and a half. And I think I, I, I covered today many of the good parts related to uh, the assignment, okay? Um, at this moment, what I will do is, because I am really tired today, um, what I will do is I will stop here and I will open the session for question and answers. And if any one of my students have a question, please feel free to give me your question and I will be extremely happy to help you, okay?